Welcome to Today Rocket Science. I'm Adam Balkin, and we're bringing you this episode from Las Vegas and the 2015 International Consumer Electronics Show, where many of the high-tech gadgets, chances are you're going to want in the coming year, are unveiled for the very first time. And maybe something you work on someday will be on display here. More on that in a minute. But first, in this episode, it's engineering in action as the 2015 first robotics competition kicks off and students get a first look at how their bots will be battling this year. In North Carolina, students are getting the basics of engineering that could one day launch them into a career in the sciences. And in Texas, one student is taking bioengineering to a whole new level as she uses stem cells to create the foundation for a human heart. All that and more in this episode of It Ain't Rocket Science, all part of Time Warner Cable's Connect the Million Minds initiative to get you educated and interested in science, technology, engineering, and math. All right, but first let's give you a little bit of a better explanation of what exactly is the International Consumer Electronics Show. If you've never heard of CES, let me break it down for you. It's about 2 million square feet of space, absolutely jam-packed with all of the latest high-tech innovations aimed squarely at you, the consumer. The breadth of innovation runs the gamut here on the show floor, from robots to drones to devices that gauge your health and read your brainwaves, even a machine to 3D print cookies. The show highlights the ways we, as humans, use technology. Science and tech rock stars here reiterate just how important science and technology are today. Without science, we're cavemen and cavewomen thousands of years ago, scratching an existence out of the ground. However, today we have modern technology, which has given us cures for diseases, it given us plenty of food and resources, and we have to realize that it's all due to science. I think science and technology, what has been thought of as nerdy for a long time, is becoming cooler than ever. The world is evolving faster than ever with sensors and Internet of Things and mobile wa and watches on your wrist. It's really about thinking big, starting small, iterating quickly, dive into it don't just stick with the theory practice play with things make things and try to get feedback from there you'll just learn so much and the world is our oyster you should just move forward and change our world stay tuned later in the show we'll give you a glimpse into the future innovation that you will be steering robots are becoming more prominent here at CES many like this one are do-it-yourself which is exactly the theory behind the first robotics competition which just kicked off its 2015 season our Bree Driscoll has more. Armed with clipboards, pens, and measuring tapes, thousands of students head into battle. When you see the video, it's like, okay, okay. And when you're on the field, you're just like, oh, this is now all real. Nothing like last year. It's, it's totally different, and I, I can't wait for the challenge. Their challenge? To design and build a robot that can survive on a high-tech game field. Constructed out of things like batteries, motors, and a control system from a kit and they only have six weeks to do it. It was actually more suspense than watching the ball drop on New Year's Eve. Uh, I think the intensity level was better than Times Square. Before inspiration and recognition of science and technology or first robotics competition kicked off at Southern New Hampshire University in Manchester, New Hampshire, with thousands more students and mentors joining in from around the world online. One of the wonderful things that happens in FIRST is quite often teams get to know teams from other places and they learn cross-cultural lessons. Brand new this year, the majority of the items in the students' kits are made out of recycled materials. So they're not only learning about things like physics and math, but also about sustainability. Engineers and scientists and technologists work on solving real world problems. I mean, things that really make the world better and thinking about how do we make a more sustainable planet? How do we make products that are easier to recycle and to reuse? Dean Kamen, the inventor of a number of breakthrough medical devices, as well as the Segway, founded first in 1989. He says the key to the program's longevity and success is in its experiences. While it's the hardest fun these people ever have, everybody involved, the parents, the teachers, the students, the mentors, the sponsors, everybody involved gets more out of it than they put into it. I love robotics. As soon as my friends introduced me to them, I was like, I love this. So I've done it every year since. And the countdown clock is ticking. The finals take place in St. Louis at the end of April. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Bree Driscoll.
In North Carolina, we caught up with some kids who aren't quite at the first robotics level yet. They're just starting out, learning the basics of engineering. Our Tim Boyum explains. Yeah, should we lower this one? Chain reaction contraptions. It sounds like a mouthful, but all about hands-on learning. So they might be playing with ramps and pulleys. They're trying to figure out gravity and force and friction to actually make their contraption do something. From toddlers to teenagers, the open-ended building activity program urges kids to solve problems. Because your hands are your best tool, and that's how we're going to discover and learn, and just ex materials exploration and a sensory social type of activity is a whole new learning experience and builds confidence and social skills and is just helping with problem solving. Jen McPherson brought her daughter and some classmates. This is the activity where the children seem to be the most focused for today, they really got involved. In a world filled with electronics, she appreciates the chance to get back to the basics. To come up with a hypothesis and then implement that process to see if it works. So I guess it's basic science where you come up with a hypothesis, you try it out, see if it works, and if it doesn't, then you do something to correct it to see if it's gonna work again. So trial and error, they're gonna learn trial and error. It's not a prescribed kind of play. It's whatever they come to the table with is the most important thing. A fun activity that keeps the wheels turning in their minds to create and innovate. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Tim Boyle. All right, we'll just stop here for a quick break, but coming up. We find out what it takes to master 3D printing from students learning the basics to the pros at the cutting edge. We'll check out how these manufacturing marvels are opening up new fields of STEM exploration. And then, learning code has never been easier, but those in the role of teaching may just surprise you. No spoiler here, you have to come back after the break. To find more hands-on science, technology, engineering, and math opportunities in your community, visit connectamillionminds.com during the break.